All right, and uh, that is uh, the situation we find ourselves in as a country. Two weeks to go to the October 26th election. A lot happening. Uh, Raila Odinga saying he will not be running, officially withdrawing himself from the race. IEBC sending a statement late last night saying no. All the eight candidates who participated in the August 8th election will be participating in this uh, current election. And of course, the Kuro Court uh, winning that case in court uh, yesterday where Justice Mativo ruled that he will be part, he should be included in the ballot paper come the 26th of October, definitely opening the way for all the others uh, who had participated on August the 8th. Joining me in studio now is uh, Collins Mango. He is a lawyer and uh, concentrates on matters uh, constitutional law. Thank you very much, Collins, for coming in. Okay. And uh, a lot of Kenyans have been asking. Is it legal for the IEBC to include everyone else who participated in the August 8th election in this fresh election? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Akisa, for having me on yeah. studio. Um, yesterday, uh, the IEBC, after the court ruling, uh, went ahead and uh, gave a memo whose content uh, is also a, a matter of debate in terms mm -hmm. of uh, its authenticity, yes. in that uh, the memo that uh, people have is one that was not signed. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, uh, the ruling yesterday by Justice Mativo through the proverbial uh, spanner into the works yes. in that uh, it brought in new dynamics. But uh, to be specific to your question, uh, the, the, I, I, I'm having issue with the interpretation of IBC to that ruling, mm -hmm. uh, to the extent of uh, including all the other candidates uh, into that uh, list. Now, a court uh, uh, petitioned the court to include him as a candidate in the forthcoming elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, he brought into the court's invitation uh, the interpretation of Article 143 mm -hmm. of the Constitution, which talks about uh, invalidation of an election and there being fresh elections. Mm -hmm. uh, be that as it may, uh, Justice Mativo in his ruling uh, uh, said that uh, in the event that uh, an election is nullif nullified, then uh, fresh nominations should be held. Yes. But he went ahead and said that uh, because of the 60-day period, which is very strict timelines, then fresh nominations should be interpreted to mean the invitation of the other candidates mm. uh, to be aspirants in the, in the, in the race. But uh, this was the, at the end, at paragraph 100 in his ruling, he was specific to give an uh, order that one, a crew court to be ordered, and the IBC by a corrigendum mm -hmm. to change the Gazette notice. Mm -hmm. So the orders were specific yeah. to uh, Okot, where they say orders in personam, and they were not orders in REM, mm -hmm. which means in totality. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, found f I find fault because uh, these are aspirants who did not uh, seek the court's uh, mm -hmm. interpretation of their rights. Some of them even considered. In some of the factors that Mativo uh, put in consideration, mm -hmm. you'll find that uh, some of the issues that were raised was, number one, did uh, Okot uh, petition the case yes. as an interested party? Mm -hmm. And the court found that uh, as an interested party, he did, he did yeah. by opposing the, the election. Mm -hmm. Then he withdrew his concession speech. Some of these candidates have been silenced ever since. We've never had, uh, we've not heard from Nyaga. And of course, there are new developments uh, in terms of uh, other candidates yes. like Jirongo. And I want us to get to that yes. um, on uh, this latest developments on some of the candidates who IEBC is saying they're being included in the list, like Sarah Jirongo being declared bankrupt.